Rain. Rain can mean many things in a narrative. Without rain, oceans would dry, crops would fail, people would die, and life would cease to exist on this very planet. Rain plays pivotal roles in mythology. Nearly every pantheon contains one or more deities with the ability to control the weather. Think Thor, Kukul Khan, Shock, and of course, Zeus. Characters in media with the influence to control the weather are tempestuous and almighty. Beings able to control their own destiny, or those whose actions are blessed by nature itself. So, I have picked three distinct moods and a fitting example for each. Isolation, indecision, and rebirth. But a quick forewarning before then, I will be spoiling the endings of Cyberpunk 2077 and Shadow of the Colossus. I will also be discussing very briefly topics of suicide between these time codes. Please avoid if you are sensitive to this matter. Isolation. Halo 3 ODST took the world by storm, literally, donning the namesake of one of the greatest game series' most influential titles. Halo 3 ODST takes a unique point of view from the other entries. The respective switches between the squad members of Alpha 9, Edward Buck, Taylor Dutch Miles, Kojo Romeo Agu, Michael Mickey Crespo, and the rookie, the player self-insert. Taking place just after the fall of New Mombasa, the game sees the player bounce back and forth between the rookie and the other squad members, recalling events that occurred just hours before the pseudo free roam sections, where you play as the rookie. One of this game's greatest selling points was, and still is, the atmosphere. After your drop pod crash lands, the once bustling streets of this African megacity are now null devoid of all life and sound, save for the sparse car alarms and automated traffic signals. Within this isolation exists, without fail, some of the most intoxicating, smooth jazz I have ever heard, all created by the same composer of the other games, the legendary Marty O'Donnell. Every flashback's mission's end is accompanied with a new serenation of saxophone and piano. While the Halo series is no stranger to piano or even electric guitar, look at Halo 2, ODST has a soundtrack so unlike anything else I've really ever played, especially for a game as old as it is now. Rain accompanies the rookie everywhere they go, with the exception of the last mission, where the sun finally comes out to play. Uncoincidentally, this is the only time, as mentioned earlier, when the player is free to roam the map. Within reason, anyway. Virgil, the super AI who acts as a guide through hell but also New Mombasa, only lets you venture into new areas when the time is right. Regardless, the constant light tapping of the cold rain against a barren and deserted concrete jungle creates a somber feeling like none else. Isolation creates a yearning for the truth, and that is exactly the fruit that ODST bears come the end. But that is another tale, for another time. Indecision. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game best played with horse blinders on. The controversy surrounding this title is drowning, but let this be known by all who watch this video and their father's father too. It may just be, despite all, one of the best times I've ever had playing a game, and that's not even an exaggeration either. Life in Night City is no meager feat. Everything from the people to the very ground you step upon is against you. It is here where I will provide the second spoiler warning for the video. Cyberpunk is an experience best had through your own gameplay. Many hours of gameplay had occurred before the moment I am about to share. So I ask you to try it for yourself, and if you are fortunate enough to possess one of the new consoles or a competent PC, that's the best way to experience it. V. Your character faces many trial and tribulation across not just Night City, but also through the Badlands to reach the point of no return, the infamous Meet Hanako at Ember's Quest, or Nocturne, OP55N1. 
V is plagued by a mind overriding chip curated by the Arasaka Corporation. Within this overriding chip is the AI construct of a Johnny Silverhand, a man so hellbent on screwing the system that he detonated not one, but two thermonuclear warheads within Arasaka HQ just 50 years prior. Throughout the game, V's condition worsens. From simple headaches to full on blood regurgitation, V is constantly dying. Creating a natural time constraint, which the player can easily ignore and be taken out of the rush, but hey, the alternative to this is beyond undesirable and you cannot argue with me otherwise. V arrives at Embers and is presented by Hanako Arasaka a deal. Arasaka will safely remove the Silverhand construct from V's brain in exchange for Soul Killer. The program Alt Cunningham, an AI, is using to sever the connection between flesh and data. Beyond working with the company who has been out for your guts throughout the entire campaign length, you are presented with three other options for endings. Two of them involving an assault with Arasaka HQ, with either Pan Am or with Rogue. But the other ending was treated super well to me and played off very naturally, where V and Johnny both have a heart to heart and commit suicide with the gun Victor gave them. Every ending of this game has its pluses and minuses, and each one is presented as a canon ending too, even the suicide route. Though of course, the ending with Pan Am where you assault Arasaka HQ and escape out of Night City into the Badlands with your preferred love interest, it feels really good, and it leaves a huge implication that there will be a sequel from it. But regardless, whatever ending you choose comes after what I would consider to be one of the better pre-ending scenes in gaming. After you meet with Hanako, V has a very bad episode, and Johnny takes control to stop the elevator on their way down to the street level. Where then, after he offers to assault Arasaka Tower, V passes out. And from here leads into this absolutely amazing use of the dialogue system, and I wish more games were this smart with it. Makoshi, then I fuck up that. Great, you checking out again? just yet. From here, V talks to Victor, and then Misty, where she then leads you to a very special place on the rooftops, where her and Jackie were at a great turning point in his life. Much the same for V as the decision made here will determine the very future for not just V, but also for Johnny, and everyone else you have met throughout the runtime. Taking the elevator and walking up the stairs, you are greeted with a cold, calm place to meditate. Night City is draped in a light drizzle. The many advertisements that decorated the horizon create a soft glare, one of them being, with no coincidence, the Secure Your Soul program. Upon the wall to the left of your peripheral is the world, one of the collectible tarot cards. The world represents the end of the fool's journey. It indicates that a major shift in your life will occur, one that will see your current self permanently changed in some way, and no matter who you call or don't, your life will change. I really like this moment. Hardship is an understatement in reference to V's character arc. From losing many, many friends to coughing up more than just two lungs, reaching this very moment where all of your efforts converge at this last time of reconciliation. The turning point of V's and Johnny's life. The end of the fool's journey. The world. Rebirth. Shadow of the Colossus has my unfettered respect. Its ability to tell a story through world building and character design, with spoken word taking a backseat, allows you to create your own conclusions while still carrying out an easy and timeless narrative. 
wander journey to the Forbidden Lands in an effort to revive the girl he brought along with him, Mono. Your only goal in this game is to kill the 16 colossi that are spread across the quiet and overgrown Forbidden Lands. As each colossus dies, Wander is corrupted more and more by Dorman, the voice guiding us with no concern for his own well-being. The final colossus you slay is dead by the fanbase, Malice. As you enter the final area, the weather, which has remained the same bright, partly cloudy day, suddenly shifts as a striking storm rolls in to befit the grandeur and somber attitude of the game's final bout. Malice is stationary, and will cast balls of lightning that hurt Wander quite a lot, requiring you to dive into barriers, alcoves, and hidden pathways that lead to the big boy. At its foot, Wander then must climb the living statue until you reach the top of its head, where the only thing you must do after is pull and stab until death. From there, Wander will absorb the final piece of Dorman's soul and become rebirth, literally. You become Dorman, or rather, Dorman becomes you. Unleashing its fury against the village chief and company who were in pursuit of Wander to prevent the very thing happening at this moment. Luckily for the villagers, Dorman inherited the incompetence of Wander and allowed its thousand year slumber awakening to be thwarted by a sealing ritual which, in a twist of events, rebirth Wander again, but as a small horned child, Romano picks you up and carries you to a secret area only reachable by some persistence and grinding. I really appreciate Rain in Gaming. Same with real life, of course. It can instill feelings of comfort equally to despair. But in this video, I wanted to cover mostly ambiguous topics like isolation, indecision, and of course, rebirth. Every game I discussed here is absolutely wonderful. You can find Halo 3 ODST on PC and Xbox through the Master Chief Collection in the form of a really cheap add-on for the whole thing. Cyberpunk is of course found everywhere except Switch. Shadow of the Colossus is available on the PS2 if you still <laughs> roll like that with the classics. But of course, it is also available on the PS4 and 5 through the Magnificent Remaster by Bluepoint. Thank you for watching. If you want to see a tiny channel like mine grow like I do, kindly subscribe, like, and maybe even share, should it truly pique yours or someone else's fancy. See you soon. See you on the other side.